newspaper files of the early West record many stories of famous and notorious characters of that period. Tom Bell, who migrated to California in the early 1850s, might have won fame as a doctor. Instead, he put aside his surgeon's scalpel in favor of a pair of lethal 38s and shot his way into Crimes Hall of Fame by committing the very first holdup of a stagecoach. Elsie, what a lovely surprise. Hold your hands. <laughs> Are you ready? For our trip to Chicago, silly. You said Friday. I'm afraid I can't swing it, Elsie. You can't pay for trips with the kind of fees I collect. For treating a case of indigestion, no doubt. You know, I thought I'd have a patient with some cash this week. But it's been the same old story. A side of ham, barrel apples, and Enough jars of homemade preserves to last us our whole married life. Not for my married life, Tom. You can't buy clothes like this in exchange for a loaf of bread. Oh, it's very pretty, but... It may not look much like a traveling suit, but you'd be surprised how far from Sacramento it'll take me. Sacramento looked pretty good to you when you arrived from the Hog Ranch. I know where I come from, just like I know where I'm going. I suppose if I can't afford the fare, Jack Phillips can. I wouldn't sneer at Jack Phillips if I were you. He can buy me anything I want. He owns a hotel. I know what he owns. That mountaineer house is nothing but a filthy hangout for every murderer, cutthroat, and tin horn gambler in California. I wouldn't talk about gambling if I were you. I suppose if I did, you'd tell me I wasn't much good at that either. Don't worry. I'm not going to make a list of your shortcomings. I haven't that much time. You must have heard that time means money. Well, that's all you're interested in. Well, I haven't got it. So get out. Tom, you might need this. Get out! about me, son. I don't even carry a gun. Climb down. Look, I know you work for the railroad. Is this all the money you got? Yeah. I've been out on a surveying trip. I've been away from the home office for, say, six weeks. What are these? Railroad checks. Yeah, but I can't cash them until I get to the bank in Marysville. Now look, son, they won't do you any good. I gotta sign them in front of one of the bank tellers. Don't take that, son. It's got all my credentials in it. What you got hidden under here? Just some of my surveying equipment, that's all. Well, you got it covered up, it ought to be diamonds. Look, if you want to ride back into Marysville with me, I'll give you some money. But it might take me six months to replace some of that surveying equipment in there. Look, son, I don't have the time to... Don't reach for that gun. That's right. Would have become a railroad detective myself if I knew a pretty assistant went with the job. Not my assistant, Marshal. My partner. <laughs> I'm sorry, Miss. That's quite all right, Marshal. Sometimes Matt makes the same mistake. Yeah, sit down. Thank you. What brings you to Marysville? One of our surveyors came out here to make a preliminary study, and he disappeared. Disappeared? We're not sure that anything happened to him, but it's the first time McCready ever skipped a weekly report. 
McCready, that the man your telegram told me to check on? That's right. He was due to arrive here the early part of the month. He got here all right. Sam Bush went down at the bank, told me he cashed a few railroad checks for him just before he pulled out. A few checks? Well, that doesn't sound like Mac. Have you got any idea what this man looked like? Never laid eyes on him myself, but he must have been a good-looking young fella. Understand he cut quite a figure with the girls down at the gold nugget his one night in town. <laughs> a good-looking young fella. That wasn't Mac. Have you got any idea where this man was headed when he left Marysville? Not the slightest. Well, he certainly wouldn't have gone back over the road where he must have left Mac. How about taking a ride with me, Sheriff? Be glad to if I can help. Let's go. Jonesy stayed behind to see if she could find out what had happened to the real McCready while the Marshal and I headed north. Following a trail an experienced criminal would never have left. Not too far north of Marysville, a little town up in the hills, a storekeeper told us that a man had bought a lot of supplies. He had helped him put them on a pack horse. Just before the man left town, he asked the storekeeper how far it was to water up on the north trail. Does that mean anything to you, Marshal? It's a long, dry stretch between here and the mountains. Yeah. Come on, let's go. Watch your budge. Okay. Younger eyes than I have. He is leading a pack horse, isn't he? Yeah. Let's go. Me. Why didn't you stop when we fired at you? I, I thought you were hold-up men. I couldn't see your marshal's badge. You can see it now, can't you? You gonna let me bleed to death? You got anything in your saddlebag to make a tourniquet out of? Yes, I think so. You, you can't put a tourniquet here. Uh, press here. Your thumb's right, right up my neck. Press hard. What's your name? McCready. You're a liar. That's not your real name. Sure it is. I've got credentials. I've got a pretty good idea how you got a hold of these. I've known McCready since I was in short pants. I want your real name and I want it fast. All right. All right. It's Tom. Tom Bell. You're under arrest. On what charge? Suspicion of murder. McCready's body was found, and Tom Bell, convicted of murder, entered Angel Island Prison on May the 14th, 1855, to serve a sentence of life. But less than a year later, he led the bloodiest jailbreak in California's history. <laughs> You'd come out when you got my message. Sit down, won't you? Thank you. We wanted to quit the case we're on the minute we heard about Tom Bell's jailbreak. I always thought Angel Island was escape proof. Bell pretended to be sick and got himself transferred to the prison hospital ward. Fooled the doctors into believing he was suffering from some rare tropical disease. They never have enough guards in the hospital wards. Yeah, but what I can't understand is why they never recaptured two of the men he took with him. But if Bell got away clean, then why... The guards were sure they winged Ned Connors and Bell White. But neither of them went to a doctor to get patched up. We had every doctor in the San Francisco area alerted. Marshal, has it ever occurred to you that Tom Bell seems to know an awful lot about medicine? I guess he does. Never gave it much thought before. Well, think about it now. 
If you remember, when we caught Bell, he told us right where to press to stop his bleeding. He was able to fool the doctors and... And none of his men needed medical aid. Well, he could be a doctor himself. You know, Jonesy, that was just beginning to occur to me. Tom Bell. It's probably not his real name. Is there a medical association around here? Mm, hardly enough doctors for that, but we got a list of most of them at the time of the jailbreak. We were in touch with all but those few I've got check marks beside them. Mm -hmm. All except this one in Sacramento is within riding distance of here. Jonesy, how'd you like to take a trip to Sacramento while the marshal and I follow up on the rest of them? All right, Matt. You can catch your early stage out of Camptonville and meet us back here Thursday morning. Tom Bell lost no time to achieve his goal, money. The prison had toughened him and made him smart in the ways of crime. No longer was he the blustering amateur bandit. <laughs> Just give me a little warning the next time you want a breath of mountain air. <laughs> You've changed a little yourself. All it takes is money, Elsie. And I've got lots of it. You don't have to wear junk like this anymore. Jack bought these for me. That's probably all he could afford. This is not for the drinks. I'm making a down payment. On this. Take your hands off her. You should have looked at your calendar before you walked out of your office. You've had your day with Elsie. Hasn't he, darling? <laughs> Looks like Mr. Phillips just resigned as proprietor of this joint. It's all yours now, Elsie. I'm making you a present of a real moneymaker. I got reasons for wanting this particular place. So leave the latchkey where I can find it. You're the doctor. Don't ever use that word. It's plain Mr. now. Mr. Tom Bell. Tom Bell. Oh. You've heard the name, huh? Who hasn't? Well, you're going to be hearing it a lot. Tom Bell and his gang are going to be rolling in money. A strange quirk of fate placed a record gold shipment aboard the stage that Jonesy took on her return to Marysville. This was a big haul Tom and his gang were waiting for. Oh, don't be too long. It hardly takes them any time to water the horses. Well, much obliged, miss, but this is as far as I'm going on the coach. I'm riding a horse back into town. Get back to work. Keep out of this. You weren't serious about trying a silly stunt like that, were you, Tom? If you didn't keep poking your nose into this, you wouldn't know what it was all about. I have every sheriff in the state out looking for you. They are now. So what have I got to lose? They can't add any time to a life sentence. Low Sutton. Besides, you better stop worrying about your new sweetheart. You better start being real nice to him. It breaks my heart to admit it, Elsie. But I lost you to Sutton in a poker game. She's Ned Connor's girl now. I threw her back in the pot and Ned had aces back. Vamoose, honey. I got something to talk to the boss about. Come on, beat it. Well? 
This one's worth waiting for. There's a hundred thousand dollars in gold riding on top. Driver, gear and Dobson's riding gun. Any passengers? Only that woman, that little fella, and he don't carry a gun. your guns. Get the box. I said everybody out. That man's badly hurt. Oh, that's the cruelest thing. your partner, Matt. Remember? Uh, what's taking it so long? Simmer down, Matt. Nothing ever happened to a stagecoach. Well, something's happened to this one. There was a holdup. There's a dead man inside, and they stole the gold shipment. It was Tom Bell's gang. Take her inside. My deputies will handle this. Down, Jonesy. Now, what's this about Tom Bell? Listen, Matt, I found out in Sacramento that you were right about his being a doctor. Did you find out anything else about him? Only that he quit medicine and left home because of an Elsie Hood who threw him over for a man by the name of Jack Phillips. This isn't much help, I guess. Elsie Hood? I remember the name of Jack Phillips used to run the mountaineer house. Well, that's where we watered the horses and a man got out. Well, like this mountaineer house might be a hangout for Bell. Well, he wouldn't be apt to go back there now. Maybe he's counting on everybody else figuring the same way. Let's go check. We haven't got anything to lose. Jonesy, you change your clothes. I'll saddle your horse and meet you at the stable. All right, Matt. All right, all right. I'm coming. Keep your shirts on. What am I ever here around here? Get this. Get that. Clean the bar. Clean the floor. been in here before. How do you know my name? Just take a chance. Why don't you take a chance and play along with us? Tom Bell's number's up. Pardon me. Where is he, Elsie? I don't know any Tom Bell. Never heard the name before. You're the only one that hasn't. He just rode up, Matt. He's going around at the stable. Are you sure? Did he see you? No. He did. This place is apt to turn into a shooting gallery. Bell got an office here. In the back. Well, you better see the head straight there. A few innocent people are liable to get killed. Including you. Marshal, you sit over here just in case. Don't forget what I told you, Elsie. Let's go, John. <laughs> Look, if 
you're looking for your sweetheart, he won't be back. Sutton and the boys met with a slight accident. Why, you no good. Double-crossing your own men. Shut up. You don't need to open that. Say, not bad. I think I'll become your manager. Seems prize fighting pays better than soothing. <laughs> So does robbery, if you're a winner every time. Something I can do for you, miss? Yes, there is. You can give me the keys. Oh, yes. The keys are right there on the desk, honey. Get over there. You sure are a lifesaver, Elsie. They were shipping me north tomorrow. You know, I didn't mean those things I said to you. I'll make it up to you. I'll take care of that. I've got a gun for you. Get in that wagon outside. Under the tarp, so nobody will see you on the way out of town. Oh, I don't know how to thank you, Elsie. Out of here. Elsie threw a gun on me. She's got Tom. She hasn't got much of a start on us. Josie, you stay here. Something here for Elsie. You haven't reached the end of the road yet, Tom Bell, but you will. What do you mean? What is this? Some folks here in California don't want to take a chance on the Angel Island prison again. So, let my own gal turn me in, huh? Not your girl, Tom. You lost me in a poker game. Only you didn't know what high stakes you were really playing for. Marshall and I arrived too late. The West first stagecoach robber had died by the rope on the afternoon of October the 4th, 1856, not knowing that he had inaugurated a new fashion in crime. Well, Jonesy, $50 and an unfinished letter to his mother seems to be all the personal effects he had. Do me a favor, Matt. Send her the money and burn the letter. She's bound to find out that Tom Bell with Dr. Thomas J. Hodges as soon as the newspapers get a hold of it. Unless you and I decided to let him go down in history as Tom Bell. Please, Matt. 